Is AI a scam? <laughs> Let's talk about it. By the way, I'm KJ Miller. I am a founder, lecturer, and content creator. I love talking about all things business and pop culture. If that interests you, be sure to subscribe. Now let's get into it. Recently, I came across this TikTok from Alex Falcone in which he asks, is AI a scam? Yep. <laughs> he immediately answers the question, yes, it is. And then he tells us why. And he builds a really compelling case. I actually want to walk through some of the case that he builds because in his TikTok, he flashes through a number of headlines quite quickly. And of course, my brain was like, ooh, ooh what are these headlines? Let me go read. So I want to take you through some of the evidence he gave to prove his point that yes, AI is a scam. Then I want to dig in and answer that question for myself based on my own experience and my own research. I will just say right at the top, I use AI pretty regularly. I use ChatGPT basically every week for my podcast. It's usually where I start. I, a lot of times when I'm doing an episode, for instance, the most recent one with Taylor Swift and Kim Kardashian, I'll ask GPT for a timeline of their feud, right? What are some of the notable moments in this timeline? I've done that for a few different shows, or I might ask, okay, give me a rundown of the history between these two people. Give me an overview or a bulleted overview of this person's like early career, right? I like to just let chat GPT kick off. And then I will typically take it from there and start doing my own research, but it kind of gives me a little bit of an outline, which I find to be helpful. So full disclosure, I am using AI on a regular basis. I've also used it for um, outlining emails. I've used it for writing blog posts. I've used it for learning the history of certain topics, um, or I've used it for explaining really technically detailed things to me because sometimes it's good at breaking things down in a super simple way. So I've used it a number of times in the past and I use it now fairly regularly, as I said, for my podcast. So I am someone who is involved with AI and therefore very curious about this question, is it a scam? Now, Alex kicks off his argument by saying there have been a number of AI products released recently that are quite bad, and he is not wrong. Maybe you've heard of the Humane AI pen. Marcus Brown Lee did a review over on his channel. There's a similar product called the Rabbit R1. These products are bad. Enough people, enough users have done tests to show they don't do what they're supposed to do. And even the things they do do, they don't do well, right? They're not good at looking up factual information or giving you factual information. They're not good at doing the actions they're supposed to do, like ordering DoorDash or getting you an Uber. They can't take notes properly. They can't read written text properly. I mean, go watch the reviews on YouTube. Enough people have done this at this point but he is not wrong. Those AI pins, the hardware we're seeing come out of AI right now, not good. Then he points to a number of times where AI, just like typical chatbot AI, has gotten things disastrously wrong. He gives the example of Facebook's AI that very recently went on a bit of a tear accusing a whole lot of Congress people and lawmakers of sexual assault and harassment. None of these allegations were true. Apparently users were just inputting phrases like a lawmaker's name and then followed by the words sexual harassment. And then the AI was spitting out whole stories about all of the sexual harassment allegations, all of the evidence against them, all of the consequences they faced, none of this was true. Alex talks about another example of a Chevy car dealership that implemented a chatbot into its website to help customers, you know, with common questions about looking for a new car. This chatbot got tricked essentially into agreeing to give people cars for a dollar, among all other sorts of nonsense that it was saying, because it turns out it's not that hard to get a chatbot to say the things you want it to say. And then a third example brought to us by New York City, they implemented a chatbot on their government website to help small business owners, basically to break through all the red tape with common questions that might get asked about 
permits or licenses or things like that. Well, this chatbot has been advising people to break the law, has been advising people of laws that don't exist, of rules that they don't need to pay attention to, basically going completely off the rails. And those are just a few examples of the things that these AI chatbots get wrong all the time. So at this point, particularly in Alex's video, I was pretty inclined to agree. You know what? Is it a scam? I think it might be. But it got me wondering, why are these chatbots wrong so frequently? And even beyond the chatbots, the hardware and other things that are being created, why are they so bad? So to answer that question, I went down two rabbit holes. One, an interview with an AI scientist named Sam Bowman. The other, Reddit. And I mean, you can learn a lot on Reddit, let's be honest. <laughs> I'm actually going to start with Reddit because I like the way things are phrased on Reddit. I mean, it's written by just normal people. And a lot of what is said in the Reddit threads that I went down is actually backed up by the AI scientist, Sam Bowman. So I stumbled on this thread here in which someone asked, this was about a year ago, why is AI often incredibly wrong about things that have objectively correct answers? Now, a lot of people responded to this, but I'm going to share a couple of the responses that I think were actually pretty helpful and that are backed up by AI scientist Sam Bowman. So here's the most upvoted answer. ChatGPT is a language model, not a knowledge model. Its job is to generate outputs that seem like they were written by a human, not be right about everything. And then another user just below that continues... Its data set is conversations and info on the internet. People on the internet have oddly been wrong on occasion. So an AI chatbot that mimics the conversations of humans online is also sometimes wrong. So right out the gate, I think both of these answers do a good job of explaining what AI, at least the AI chatbots that we are all currently using and loving to some extent, what they're really doing. And what they're doing is taking a massive data set of all of the things that have been written and are you know, searchable on the internet, taking that massive data set and then predicting based on any input you give it, what the most likely output would be or should be, right? It's really just a predictive model. It's saying, oh, you're asking me about a lawmaker and sexual harassment. Let me, using everything I know about lawmakers and sexual harassment, spit out the most likely answer to you, which is that these lawmakers were sexually harassing. <laughs> and here are all the allegations and here's all the evidence. That's the most likely scenario based on the input that you've given it. So that's what's, what it is going to spit back out to you. Along with these chatbots being trained to deliver what the most plausible output is based on the input, there's also an element of training that involves what is going to be the output that the user is going to like the most. So now I want to turn to Sam Bowman. In an interview that he did with Vox, there's a podcast and an article, I'll link it below. He is talking about the idea of reinforcement learning. And he says this, the basic idea behind this is you have some sort of test users chat with the system and essentially upvote or downvote responses, sort of similarly to how you might tell the model, all right, make this word more likely because it's the real next word. With reinforcement learning, you say, all right, make this entire response more likely because the user liked it and make this entire response less likely because the user didn't like it. Now, this is actually extremely interesting because I think this starts to get to why these chatbots can often be so easily tricked. Not only are they trained to fill in the most likely output, they are trained to fill in with the output you're going to like the most. So if you are directly saying, this is the sort of information I want, if you're at the Chevy dealership <laughs> chatbot and the information that you want is to know that you can purchase a car for a dollar, the chatbot is incentivized to tell you that. That's how the chatbot has been trained. It hasn't been trained to lie or tell the truth. It hasn't been trained to know the difference between facts and fiction. It has been trained to fill in the blank, both with what is most likely to be right 
and what is most likely to be liked. And I do just want to talk briefly about how Sam describes basically how the AIs work in terms of that prediction piece, because he's an actual scientist. I don't want you to think I only read Reddit, okay? (laughs) So Sam says this, the main way that systems like ChatGPT are trained is by basically doing autocomplete. We'll feed these systems sort of long text from the web. We'll just have them read through a Wikipedia article word by word. And after it's seen each word, we're going to ask it to guess what word is going to come next. It's doing this with probability. It's saying it's a 20% chance it's the, 20% chance it's of. And then because we know what word actually comes next, we can tell it if it got it right. And after a lot of training, Obviously, a lot of training and a lot of data, that system is going to get really good at predicting what the next right word or the next right prompt or paragraph should be. And when you combine that with the reinforcement learning, you get to what we all are currently using, chat GPT or whatever chat bots you're using. The one caveat that I think is very important to note and that Sam makes very clear is that AI scientists don't really know how AI works, (laughs) which I think is crazy. This is a direct quote from Sam. Hold on. So in this same interview, Sam talks about two big unknowns. And this isn't just him, one guy, one AI scientist who doesn't know these things. He is saying the AI industrial machine, AI scientists broadly, these big tech companies with billions of dollars, they don't know these two things. The first is that we don't really know what they're doing in any deep sense. If we open up ChatGPT or a system like it and look inside, you just see millions of numbers flipping around a few hundred times a second, and we just have no idea what any of it means. With only the tiniest of exceptions, we can't look inside these things and say, oh, here's what concepts it's using, here's what kind of rules of reasoning it's using, here's what it does and doesn't know in any deep way. We just don't understand what's going on here. We built it, we trained it, but we don't know what it's doing. Okay, so let me just stop right there and say, uh, that is perplexing. That is confounding. You built it, you trained it, but you don't know what it's doing. (laughs) I just feel like, is there any other technology that we are using on a regular basis where people can say that? Like if a car engineer said, yeah, we built the car, but we don't know how it works. Wouldn't you be alarmed? I find that alarming. But wait, there's more. Sam continues, the other big unknown that's connected to this is we don't know how to steer these things or control them in any reliable way. We can kind of nudge them to do more of what we want, but the only way we can tell if our nudges worked is by putting these systems out in the world and seeing what they do. We're really just kind of steering these things almost completely through trial and error. Okay, so these AI scientists They don't know how the AI is working. And they also don't know how to control the AI. (laughs) Um, You know, is it just me? Am I the only one flabbergasted by that? I think that that is wild. But I also think it starts to make sense why AI is getting it wrong so often and why so much of the AI that has been released, particularly in hardware form, is bad. The truth of the matter is so much about this tech, we just don't understand. And by we, I mean the people who are supposed to understand. I don't mean me personally. Of course, I don't understand. I'm not an engineer. But even the people building and working and researching on AI don't fully understand it. So it makes sense to me that a lot of the products and things that are being launched are gonna be flops. All of this brings me back to my original question, is AI a scam? Now in Alex's original video, he concludes, uh, yes, it is. Not just because of how wrong it often is, but also because it's extremely expensive and very damaging for the environment. Apparently, just like the amount of resources that it uses up to run these large language models and and various AI is, is quite excessive. So for him, he's saying, yes, AI is a scam. My perspective on this is a little bit different. I will say I have found AI to be genuinely helpful Again, for the reasons I've already named, writing blog posts, doing, you know, initial research for my podcast, drafting emails. These are all fairly basic tasks. And right now, 
the fairly basic tasks are what I think AI is good for. And I would even caveat that more, not just the fairly basic tasks, but also the ones that you have the ability to fact check yourself. There's nothing that I have put out there that an AI has said that I haven't then gone and fact checked because you just can't trust them to not get it wrong for all of the reasons we just talked about. But because I do feel that AI is helpful, at least right now in these limited ways, I do also have faith that the tech is going to continue to get better because generally that's how technology works. The question I think, and Alex basically raises this question, is, is it worth it? Given how expensive it is, given how much of a strain it puts on sort of the earth's resources, is it worth it? And to be very honest, I don't fully know the answer to that because I don't know how good the good can get and how bad the bad can get, right? Like if this AI tech really does get to be phenomenal and provides the cure for cancer at some point, maybe we would all say, oh, it was worth all the billions of dollars and the natural resources that it took up. But if all it can do is write me a better essay three years from now, Maybe we'd all disagree. I'm going to punt on that a little bit. Is it worth it? I'm going to punt. Maybe hit me in a year. But is it fully a scam? I'm going to say no. I think you just have to, once you understand exactly what this AI is, it helps you realize how you can use it as a tool. There are some things it's going to be good at, and there are some things it's going to be very bad at. You've got to decide for yourself how you're going to use it. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, I hope you will subscribe and I will see you next time.